Behind the Counter is sponsored by Hover.com. Domain names made simple. Go to gfq.hover.com and get 10% off your entire purchase. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash gfq. Hello, everybody. It's Friday night, and guess what you're watching? Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich Stambolin, and with me, as always, a man who single-handedly broke down the Berlin Wall, Jonathan Adler. These fists are so strong. <laughs> Politics and bricks <laughs> fall at their might. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could run for office. Uh, you should run for office. I should run for should office. should run for uh, Queen City Council. <laughs> too many dark secrets. <laughs> Skeletons. They, they were just like, it'd be too much. No. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh So what is up, dude? What's up, bro? Nothing. I'm just perusing the internets, checking out these cool vibes that are being put out yeah. by Marvel's new July stations. They got uh, <laughs> Grateful Dead number one coming out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> cool vibes. Good th- vibe. Cool vibes number three is coming out. Awesome. Right, yeah. Who's who's the creative team on there? Uh, Kara Andrews and <laughs> uh, Recommender. <laughs> Work on it. Uh, we got a lot every every week uh, yeah. for the past like uh, I would say like almost two months. There has been zero like news. We kind of no news. Um, no news. Nothing like of 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 merit. But today today we are gonna fill you with your fill. So much of freaking news. Comic book news. There's a lot of news. This is a uh, this is a big for some reason. This is like a gigantic. Way. I think the weather's beautiful and like stuff started to happen. Yeah, I. Uh, it's good to see uh, just like dribbles of news coming out every yeah. once in a while. I get too excited about stuff coming down. Droplets of news Droplets. have arrived. So welcome. Um, welcome. Yeah, yeah. I I can't wait. What do you What do you want to open up with? Um, your hey man, taste of choice, brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, brother. <laughs> uh, let's go with the, the little teaser because it's it's been on my mind. We just talked about it outside. Mm. Um, the Avengers, uh, kind of spoiled the reveal. Not really, maybe of who the aliens are going to be or mm. like who those beings are. Um, there was a little bit of a mystery behind who Loki's forces were going to be. Right. The alien force that was going to be his army. Mm-hmm. Can we get can we get a shot of those aliens uh, coming up? Uh, these guys who look they could be Asgardian, they could be from another planet. You don't really know. This is like the big threat. Um, it seems like they're going the more of the ultimate route and having them as the Chitauri. Yes, which are the ultimate scrolls, basically. Yes, and that's it. That's what really. That's yeah. you know. Uh, they, I think at one point they asked straight out, like, are the scrolls the bad guys in the, the movie? Right. They said, no, no, no. So this is the, the loophole that the mm-hmm. Chitori. The Chitori. Can we get a shot of the, I, I threw a shot in the, the Chitori over there. Um, not, they don't really look like these dudes, but they weren't, they were like the ultimate scrolls. And it's kind of, they have like kind of like a neat look, you know? They were all right. They're just like, uh. Oh my bad. Anyway, they're like goofy looking. Uh, Google it. Black uh, <laughs> black aliens. You got a supercomputer at home. Google it. Um, so I really like the theory that you told me last week when we were waiting online at the bagel store for an hour. Uh, that's right. Uh, uh, yeah. The Corbinites. Because mm-hmm. uh, they have this. They the, the dudes in the movie kind of look like they have like little horse features. Right. Uh, so for those who don't know, there's a there's a race of beings called the Corbinites. Who, uh, they basically didn't look like horse people, but miraculously one did. Right. That special Corbinite was Barry Bill, mm-hmm. one of the few people to weld the hammer. So it'd be a really cool thing if he's they're fighting these Corbinites at one point, and Thor was fighting one of these dudes, and all of a sudden, like he picks up Thor's hammer, turns into Barry Bill, and just mm-hmm. like flies off and leaves. Like, whoa! <laughs> I would be 
<laughs> I'd be pretty, you know, nerded out. You'd, I, I would poo my pants yeah. if that happened, especially if it happened like that, where like there's a fight and he just grabs it and leaves. Because in the in the in the Beta Ray Bill miniseries that came out a few years ago, they showed that he was normal looking until yeah. he got the hammer because they all, they all look like that. You know, yeah. they're like brownish and they have like smashed up faces. Yeah. But for some reason, when he got the power of Thor, his face extended. Yeah. Into a, like a dead horse. Yeah. You know? And he's like a cyborg too. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, man, that would be awesome. But mm-hmm. hey, man, scrolls are cool too. Yeah, <laughs> scrolls are pretty cool. Um, we didn't rent this movie. No, not at all. And you have uh, you have like some cool like other movie news. What like I, I think the big debate, which is which is kind of neat, is like when when you're kids, you'd always be like, I love Marvel, I love DC. It's gonna happen again with Avengers and Batman. You yeah. know, because uh, from from what we've been hearing, Avengers is no joke. Like this movie's gonna be awesome, and also you know Batman's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, I, I'm I'm uh, pretty amped up for both the movies, but mm-hmm. me personally, I'm I think I'm a little bit more for the Batman. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's kind of like a guarantee. You know, like mm-hmm. we're gonna get a ridiculously awesome film, and also it's such a different movie. Yeah, from Avengers. Avengers is like you know, is the rainbow. Yeah, it's the popcorn yeah. movie. Yeah. You know, like uh, there's a little bit more um, schmatz in the the Batman. It's 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 also a testament to all the previous Batman films because, like like you said, you know, you're more excited about Batman movie. I will pay my eleven dollars to see Christian Bale in a bat suit yell for three hours. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> where where are the trucks? You know. Where are the trucks? So, uh, but this week they released the um, the first high res image of um, the Catwoman costume of uh, Anne Hathaway in the Catwoman costume, mm-hmm. which looks really cool because like all you saw uh, before was her like evening like, wear, yeah, and then like that one shot of her on the bike, yeah, you know. But now it's like they actually have like the uh, it's a bad, it's a bad you know picture. Uh, that's the one. It that's, looks like weird. the official uh, costume. You know, she's got like metal heels and a gun. And she kind of looks like Black Widow, mm-hmm. you know, and she looks like Julie Newmar. Yeah, she does. You know? She has that belt thing going on with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and what, what, what's cool, too, is that we really don't know what type of Selena Kyle this is going to be. Right. We don't know if this is going to be the whore, uh, the whore yeah. <laughs> or is this going to be someone who's working with Bane, mm-hmm. you know, part of his organization, which is more than likely. Um, or, or maybe a lady that was murdered and resurrected by cats. No. <laughs> I, listen, I like that one. <laughs> You know, you any anything that mm. allows you to have a uh, a revenge story involving Christopher Walken, I am mm. a okay with Max Shrek. Max Shrek, no. it's gonna that's gonna be the reveal. In, That'd be uh, so awesome. Again, you'd poop your pants. Uh, I would. Uh, did you read the article about the that was attached to that little image at all? No. She thought she was interviewing. <laughs> uh, I know. Neither can I. That was re- that was read to me. Um, <laughs> she was thought she was a. Uh, Auditioning for Harlequin, okay, S- because she thought that they were never going to go back to um, back to Catwoman because mm-hmm. Michelle Pfeiffer did such a great job. Uh huh. She did. Yeah, but <laughs> I don't think she. You know, it's not like Keith Ledger where it's like, oh, we can't go into Joker for a while, right? You know, we can go back to Catwoman. It's yeah, not that tough. You can definitely go back to Cat. I mean, like I feel like after doing a uh, Heath Ledger Joker, you, you know, the people were like, it's not Jack Nicholson. I'm like, who cares? Who cares? Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't supposed to be. No, but I'm saying I mean, like people for a lot of people, a lot of people I know for their money, like until they saw he led his performance, they were like, "You can't be Jack Nicholson as the Joker." Yeah, and he you did know. destroyed he it completely. Did oh, you you think well a different time? You think he really destroyed it, or you think he yeah. played it differently? Well, of course, he played it differently. Yeah, I mean, but like, I think he did. I think he did the best job of anyone playing Joker before. I I enjoyed the realism of his Joker as opposed to the complete camp of. Uh, not not taking away anything from from Jack Nicholson Joker because I love Jack Nicholson Joker and there's some awesome parts in that movie. But he's Jack Nicholson. Yeah, like and he's playing Jack Nicholson. Right, playing Joker. Mm-hmm. I think the Riddler was the best one ever done. On mm. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be uh, Batman Four. They're gonna bring Jim Carrey back as the Riddler. <sighs> you know, but it, it, he could have done a good job. It was just an awful, awful movie. That is one of the worst movies ever made. Oh yeah, and the uh, the one after that we're too. Not, we're not doing this again. Um, <laughs> we're not talking about Batman. No, we're either going to talk about Batman or ba- Kevin Nash. Oh. Batman, Kevin Batman, <laughs> losing, losing control. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, to to bring everybody up to speed, John uh, is 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 about to blow a gasket because uh, he burnt out. <laughs> he burnt out on uh, on the constant wrestling talk between Andrew and I. Um, 
There might be something in the works, fans, <laughs> <laughs> about wrestling talk. Coming down the human centipede. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what else we got? We got uh, we got Batman. We got Batman. We got um, Spider Man. The the crossover between Ultimate Spider Man and a uh, regular continuity Spider Man. Yeah. And they they actually said that they're gonna switch worlds and meet. No, not not no, nah, not that they're gonna switch worlds, but they're gonna meet. They're gonna meet. So Miles Morales is gonna end up meeting Peter Parker. Yeah. At one point. Um. Can we get that up there? It's an awesome, awesome picture uh, of both of them kind of swinging through the city. The, uh, the Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah. My Jewish dentist. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah, so you're going to have like um, Little Blatino Spidey meeting um, American Pie Spidey. Which is cool, yeah. too, because it adds this, this element because, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Peter Parker in that world in the ultimate world is recently dead. Right. People are still saying that uh, Miles Morales is in poor taste of actually right. being Spider-Man. Uh-huh. So this, you know, what happens when Peter Parker shows mm-hmm. up and an older, an older one. Peter so they're Parker. probably going to think that he's probably like Peter Parker in the future. So maybe they think like, you know, Oh, he's going to come back. Right, right, right. It opens up a lot of awesome storytelling possibilities. Uh, I think I, I mentioned this to you the other day. If you have the the fact that this dude is in the Ultimate Universe, like he is the uh, he's by far the best hero that they have because he's like tried and true. You know, uh, like Ooh. the Ultimates are screwed are, are screw ups. Yeah, they are. Yeah, you know? they're all messed up. Yeah, they're like really messed up messed up dudes. And you have like awesome Peter Parker from regular Marvel Universe showing up. That'd be kind of neat. And plus, you would have an awesome story with. Miles Morales, show, if he shows up in regular continuity, saying, like, these guys are so much larger than life. They're yeah. so good. They've been doing it for a lot longer, too. Yeah. Um, I was really hesitant with this story. This is mm-hmm. this is, this is is one of those things. Because I, I really don't want them to start making this all willy-nilly and having crossovers with Ultimate and regular. Because I like the right. fact that Ultimate was, was a universe that they really couldn't touch. Right. Um, and it was complete. Didn't, didn't count in the world of, like, the multiverse. Mm-hmm. Um, was somewhere you can just like open up a portal and you know jump into like Age of Apocalypse. Ultimate was like its own entity, its own little monster. Yeah. So um, I just hope they do it the right way. I, I, think I mean, so. Bendis is doing it, so I mean, it, it, I'm sure it's gonna be held. But I just don't mm-hmm. want it to be every other you know month we're gonna have like Ultimate Iron Man show up or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you can go either way with those stories. Like they could either leave it the, like be really incredible or leave like a weird taste in your mouth. Like, uh, and I'm gonna si- I'm gonna signal out that um, that Jason Aaron Wolverine. Uh, Spider-Man story, which was cool, but I, I just feel like it lost its way, like in like the third issue, and it was just yeah. kind of weird. But th- which one are you talking about? The one with um, with the time traveling spider. I love and, that. Uh, man. <laughs> I, you, I know you weren't a fan of that. I love the crap out yeah. of that. It's a lot of cool stuff going. There was on. a lot of cool stuff, but at the same time, it was like for me that was one of those kind of like eh. it was crazy. It was really nuts. Yeah. Give it a try. Pick up the tra- pick up that trade. Mm-hmm. Uh, what uh, what other news bits we got? Well, Watchmen, some Watchmen stuff. Uh, they did a lot of press for Watchmen. Yeah, there was the uh, Diamond Summit in Chicago, I believe. Yeah, the retailer summit where um you know if you own a a, a comic book store you have and your distributor is Diamond, you mm-hmm. get to be invited to um these summits every so often, and they give you like kind of teasers and like basically saying like, hey, this book is gonna be be good please up, buy this like, stuff up your orders dude you know like don't order 10 of these order a thousand yeah um Pl- yeah please buy these things yeah so they showed the first eight pages of uh as Azima- you mandius as mandius to um the retailers and the reports came in that uh this was be- jay lee's best work yeah like ever which is which i'm sure is mm-hmm. great i mean like he's a, he's an amazing talent who's come a long long mm-hmm. way um i'm looking forward to it I'm looking forward to it too. There's another interesting tidbit with that, as far as art goes. I think uh, Amanda Connor's uh, Silk, Silk Spectre. Mm-hmm. They said that she's maintaining the nine box format, like like original oh, Watchmen. Awesome. Um, but everybody else kind of like is outside the uh, outside the box with their art, you know. Uh, and they're also talking good things about uh, yeah. Bermehu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His art on it. Um, I want to mention uh, one of my favorite books. Uh, since we're talking about all these little reveals and everything going on, uh, Thunderbolts. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we brought it up before, but Thunderbolts is becoming another book. It's becoming Dark Avengers. Right. Um, Thunderbolts for the past uh, many years has been going through many changes. We've had it started out as uh, the Masters of Evil disguised themselves as superheroes, and when there were no superheroes, such a reveal, awesome reveal. Yeah. 
Um, it's always about redemption, all stuff, and mm-hmm. f- they have done stupid things like made them a Fight Club book, and then they had another story about like currently it's been a really great story about um, a bunch of escapees uh, traveling through time. Yeah, um, and now they're actually facing off against the original. Uh, incarnation of Thunderbolts right yeah. before this book becomes Dark Avengers mm. which is pretty weird and pretty kind of out there but uh, Thunderbolts and Dark Avengers I mean they both have you know like what we know with Thunderbolts and the the reignited interest in Thunderbolts comes mm. from Warren Ellis's work on, on the book right which yeah. is like the roots for you know Norman Osborn and mm. that really cool stuff that we've seen in Marvel for the past few years but uh, the team is going to still have the time travel aspect on, which is going to be really awesome. Mm-hmm. But we also get these new Dark Avengers, which were just in the uh, the new mm-hmm. Avengers books. Uh, we've got a new Scar- like a Scarlet Witch, Trickshot, like Trickshot, the Hawkeye, yeah, the Hawkeye's brother, uh, uh, Gorgon as Wolverine, yeah, Gorgorine. We've got the uh, Ali Apaka with the gigantic spider. Yes, yes. Who looks so much cooler when he's mm-hmm. not the little black Spider Man. Yeah, and he also looks so much cooler when Diodata draws him. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you'll have Scar. Mm-hmm. We have Luke Cage on the team. Um, it's just a beautiful book. Yeah. Uh, it's a really, really fun, fun read. I think a lot of people mm-hmm. should get on board, especially when it becomes this uh, Dark Avengers book. Right. It's I, really enjoyable for 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 Marvel fans and you know fans of of the company in general. Like Thunderbolts has always been the book that anything can happen in. You know, it's yeah. it's. I'm not saying it's their recycle bin, but it's like it's their mashup pile. Yeah, they're like let's make let's put this 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 and this in here and see what happens, and it always ends up really good. Well, what's know? always great about it too is that it's always composed of B level characters. Right. So you do have the disposable area. Like this is mm-hmm. a, uh, and characters that normally haven't been played with in a long time. Like you know. Th- Mr. Hyde has been in a thousand books, and this right. is the, some of the best written Mr. Hyde stuff mm-hmm. I've ever read. Absolutely, you know uh, Santana, um, Satana, Satana, Satana. <laughs> I was like, oh. uh, Man Thing being like a teleporter. Yep. Uh, classic Moonstone stuff. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, some Zemo stuff coming down. You know, it's gonna come down a pike. Yeah, I know you're excited about that. I'm always excited about Zemo. You still have Gunna on the team. New character, awesome yeah. turnout. Mm-hmm. Uh, great to fixer. Yep, yep, fixer. And uh, what's his continuum? I want to say his name is uh, um, Cent- Centurion. Centurion. Centurious. Yeah. Centurious. Uh, Who reminds me of? Uh, remember um, Channel One Thirty One a few years ago? Cosby Team Triosby. Yeah, yeah. He reminds me of uh, one of the like smart that. Cosby's. He does with the, like the cadence. Yeah, you know, because he's like so smart, and he's like, no, we're gonna press this button over here, and it's gonna happen over there. Yeah. Awesome book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is awesome a good book. book. It is a good book. Uh, what else we got coming down the pike? What else we got going down the pike? Uh, I should. I have notes that we just talked ultimate, about. Uh, ultimate Cap is coming back. Coming back. And supposedly with a very controversial story. Yeah. I like uh, the, the, the news I'm blurb. I'm a racist. The, n- <laughs> <laughs> the news blurb. I'm really a corporal. No surprise. The, uh, the news blurb was Ultimate Cap is coming back and he has a decision to make. Yes. They also have. They also are teasing uh, astonishing X Men is coming mm-hmm. back in some form, which would be the fallout of possibly AVX. Yeah. Um. What else? A lot of. Uh, we, I, we were talking about this before. I'm really excited about all this Iron Man stuff that's about to happen. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Iron Man's about to go like right. I, right now, Iron Man's going through his own personal nightfall. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, he broke his uh, sobriety. Mm-hmm. Um. He's, he's being outed he's to being, the media, basically. He got he's under control by mm-hmm. the government. If they uh, they can basically turn his suit of armor off anytime they want via hammer, via hammer, mm-hmm. which is is a big threat to him. Um, St- uh, Obadiah Stane mm-hmm. and uh, excuse me, uh, Zeke Stane mm-hmm. and the Mandarin have have basically taken the entire rogues gallery of Iron mm-hmm. Man and made them a, a lot better and tougher and cutting edge. Um, and put bombs in all their heads. And put bombs in all yeah. their heads so they could all die at any moment. Yeah. Very Suicide Squad. The Mandarin. Um, the Mandarin is about is creating some crazy tentacled mm. robotics that yeah. are supposedly going to play into the future. Um, plus, we have uh, Spymaster lurking around somewhere. Mm. He's uh, inside of Stark Resilient, which right. is Stark's crew. And uh, there will be a new Iron Man mm-hmm. uh, in a couple of months. And you're saying that Rhodey may die also with... Uh, yeah. The, oh, he's going to get melted by the Melter? Yeah. The, <laughs> uh, so they, the Melter, the, they made this this kid Melter. Mm. Melter was always like a really crappy character who uh, was like an Iron Man bad guy who mm-hmm. basically melted your crap. Yeah. Uh, so they have this kid 
who showed up in a, a, Paul, Paul, a Paul Cornell book. Um, I don't remember what, what book that was called mm. when they had like the Young Masters of Evil. Um, but he debuted in that. And now I think he, they're making him where he's like the loose cannon, where he's gonna mess up and he's gonna end up mm-hmm. like either like Harvey disfiguring or like really messing up or killing Rhodey, Rhodey in the next yeah. issue. I, you know what? Like I don't think they're gonna go with another death of Rhodey. Yeah, because he's human again. You know, like yeah. I, I loved him as as the the insane cyborg. I hated that. Really, that that yeah. he could attach any piece of equipment to him and just like be insane. You didn't you didn't like that? You didn't like that at all? The cover, that one cover where he's got tank treads and a nuclear missile on his back and wings. Uh, awesome. I think it was cool. I thought yeah. I thought there was cool stuff out of it. I I was not a fan of him being like a ridiculous cyborg. I like the mm. setup that he was like the uh, you know like the anti-terrorist and right. like America this America that but he had a headqu- headquarters in space yeah uh, that was cool there was and it was like in, there was some like the, they used Ultimo and like yeah whatever so new Iron Man yeah <laughs> so there's there's gonna be uh, he can't Tony Stark cannot be Iron Man anymore so there mm-hmm. has to be this new there to being a new armor and all this cool stuff uh, Pepper 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 Potts gonna be the new Iron Man. No, you don't think so. No, she's still gonna be rescued. No, she's gonna be happy they're gonna sh- Hogan. They're gonna switch. Happy Hogan's coming back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So, a lot of lot of good stuff going on with Marvel. A lot of cool it's transitionary time. Uh, it is. And the other thing we were talking about before is like so much cool uh, Avengers versus versus X Men chatter. Yeah. You know, because you don't know what's gonna happen at all. You know, no. who's going to bite it? Who's going to fight? Who's there's got to be deaths. There's yeah. got to be surprises. There's got to be major fallout, too. Yeah. Because you know? it's 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 They're, another uh, it's like a different version of Civil War, you know, and there's no villains playing into this at all until a certain point, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is going to be this is their biggest, mm-hmm. biggest story. Yeah. And there is no there is no visible threat of like the villains showing mm-hmm. up like who who would show up at this point? Doom is, you know, doing his thing. Doom is like in uh, another universe. Yeah. Uh, Red Skull is dead. Right. Sin. Uh, Sin just got appointed to be the leader of the new DOA division mm-hmm. of Hydra. Mm-hmm. Good for her. Yeah. Promotions right, all around. Mandarin's busy with Iron Man. Mandarin's busy with Iron Man. Uh, Magneto's on the X Men. Not a bad guy anymore. Not a bad guy. Or maybe this is it. Maybe this is the time. I don't. I wouldn't want the turn to happen. Maybe so, maybe this is like the opportune time for him to step up. As like mm-hmm. Cyclops gets like his head chopped off by Captain America, and then <laughs> nah, <it's>, told you. <laughs> I Man it up. You know what? I maybe Magneto dies saving that. That could be the the call to arms. Magneto dies saving somebody. Scarlet Witch. And you know they're like mm-hmm. Magneto, the ultimate bad guy, sacrifice himself. Let's go get them, dudes. Maybe. Could be, man. There's a lot. I mean, yeah. I really have. N- I, mm-hmm. I, I really don't know where they ultimately are going with this thing. Mm-hmm. It's so still early in the game. Um, We're looking yeah. at, what, was it 12 issues this long? I think so. Two a month. Mm-hmm. Um, So we're looking for six months of, of a lot of crap going on. Mm-hmm. Um, You have Ben, this is a swan song. Right. Um, Sure, there's going to be lots of shakeups. It's about time. It's about time. The uh, I always say this, man. We always say this too. That it's about time that the X Men got thrust into the forefront of the Marvel universe. Yeah, you know, and in a really, really like you know, with their knuckles, right? And this, know, this is a good story to do it too. Yeah, you know, because it's it recognizes the Phoenix is not Jean Grey going crazier on her uh, Menzies. It's an actual cosmic force showing up. And yeah, people are worried about it. You know, like it's more of a global. Uh, Kind of thing. We also may could possibly have some kind of uh, Revengers moment. Revengers with uh, Wonder Man. Ooh, yeah. Well, yeah. There's mm-hmm. still he's still floating around Scarlet somewhere. Witch. Yep. Yeah. So you have that. You have like some cool vision shit that's gonna happen. Yeah, I wonder. Um, what else we got? Oh, they released a the cover of uh, Walking Dead 100. Mm. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, I didn't. I saw that I was posted. I did not check it out. You know what? Yeah. time. We just uh, we, th- we threw it up on the uh, on the screen for you guys. Uh, it's a teaser cover. It's not coming out for a few months, but it's Rick walking away from the corpses of every single person that has died in the comic Ooh, thus far. Very good so, cover. You, yeah, it's a beautiful cover. You see Shane, Tyrese, um, the governor, and just a bunch of dead bodies. And Rick, maybe this is Rick Swan song. Maybe he is not going to make it. I don't know about that. No. No, explain if you're going on for I, mm-hmm. it, I think if he's going to be on this book for as long as he is, uh, I think they need mm-hmm. to keep Rick around. Do you think so? I don't, I don't think the kid maybe. is going to make it. 
No, no. I, I, I'm, I'm still banking on uh, Carl taking over. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's the way. I mean, that's the way you would you would have to go. But uh, damn, there's a lot of people gonna die in this yeah. book. It's it, it's speaking of uh, major comic book deaths. Yeah, yeah dude, that'd be a major death. That would be probably one of the most major deaths in um, any publication in recent memory, too. You know, yes. Especially because uh, it's garnered so much fervor between um, fans of both the show and the comic book, who yeah. probably who, like, and fans of the show who started reading the comic book who are not up to date with the comic. Yeah, you know, it's going to completely throw everybody for a loop. You know, well, I, know, I saw a lot of people, uh, especially this season, started uh, you know posting pictures of like uh, like panels from the comic yeah, yeah. book and stuff it's like so that. Good. It's so good. So <laughs> good. Where were you? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck. Is, is there is there derision in uh, being an old school Walking Dead fan and an old school so. Walking Dead I fan? I don't, so. I don't think so. I think that's I I, mm-hmm. I I welcome everyone to come about come on board, especially with Walking Dead because it's such an easy book to get yeah. into. It's kind of the, that's one of the beautiful things about comics is that you can't ever go. Well, I was there at the beginning. Like, all right, cool. You were there when when Stan Lee was writing. Uh, Spider Man, <laughs> still in high school. That's awesome. The rest of you are scum. When we worked at the store together, that was a big argument with like a lot of the older dudes who was like, "You don't know good comics." I was there. I was there. Yeah, I can still read those. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're behind us. Like you can read them. Yeah, they didn't like, go anywhere. I was there at the newsstand when Vulture showed up. An old man in a Vulture costume. Come on, come on. Guys. You're not gonna get better than that. Never. Give never. me your gambits. I was. There. <laughs> I need. Uh, I need three gambits and I need fourteen venoms. <laughs> Stat, please. One carnage, and uh, maybe half of uh, of ultra. Hey man, I'm a big fan of Carnage USA. All right. I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. Do you want to dedicate uh, an episode to Carnage USA? <laughs> uh, maybe it's wrapped up. Maybe it's wrapped up. Well, I had this pop. Uh, give me, uh, give me, give me ten issues of Prime. Ten issues of Prime. Remember, uh, remember Prime? I love Prime. The uh, the kid who became Hercules, basically. I was a big fan of Prime. Yeah. He went. He had a bad boy persona at one point. Yep. He had like a uh, bobby pin through his nose. Talk <laughs> about uh, talk about properties that could make a giant comeback, man. Malibu, yeah. all of Malibu. Yeah. All that stuff was great. All of Malibu was awesome. Yep. We we got we we'll, we should be doing an episode of awesome properties that have been forgotten mm. that that would make a lot of sense in in current continuity, <laughs> or current current uh, market structure, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, man. I think I think we should do that. Yeah, it would be awesome. I think we should do that. Um, you want to do the books of the week? Sure. All right. Uh, you know, while we're we're talking about uh, the uh, did I forget one? No, I didn't. The uh, the Avengers X Men stuff. Um, mm. New Avengers <laughs> number twenty four came out. I sure did. Yoda. Um, and I I like this cover a lot, but at the same time, it's like it's 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 a funny cover to me. It also looks like every other cover to this crossover. Yeah, not I wouldn't say the best work from Deodato, but I just like the fact that Wolverine is. What it's, it's hey. is he saying like you're not fighting when I'm not fighting I gotta fight now we I gotta, gotta fight I gotta fight some stuff you guys are fighting we're we'll fighting now uh so great issue it kind of sets up um this is like the precursor to this is like classic Bendis stuff. yeah um the precursor to of AVX number one where. Cap is already on the shore right before uh, the Avengers Assemble gets called out, and they're in the helicarrier, kind of floating on top of Utopia. Mm-hmm. Tell us more. And the, uh, the <laughs> that, was your, that was your segue of uh, oh my segue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then the yeah kind of jumps around a little bit. You know, yeah. you get you get like this yesterday today type of thing. Mm-hmm. So you get the moments uh, right before uh, basically the Avengers mm-hmm. X Men. Big old brawl about to pop off. Also eating one more time. I want to mention more. that. It's true. Wow, they are eating. And yeah, it goes right into them eating. Mm-hmm. Uh, I brought this up with you before. I really like what they've done with Red Hulk, mm-hmm. where he's the other soldier character. Yeah, yeah. And he's kind of like, this is what we're going to do, and we're going to do it this way. Cap wants us to do it this way. Mm-hmm. We got to do it. We got to go out there. We got to bust some heads. Yeah, like he is General Thunderbolt Ross. He do, he does an awesome, awesome speech. Um, and I think I, I think Cap is the only one who knows that he's Thunderbolt, right? Yeah. Um. So Cap finally has like a second in command who's like, I'm not the only guy who's ever in the military now. And yeah. I was in the military like 100 years ago. Yeah. Um. So you have like... Uh, like an awesome speech in the beginning, like as they're jumping out of the helicarrier, and he's like, "If we're not successful, the world won't exist tomorrow. Be successful, you know." And if not, that's it. Yeah, like awesome rallying cry from a giant red monster, you know. And you have like the thing jumping out of the heli- uh, helicarrier, Daredevil, Wolverine, uh, Mockingbird, Spidey, like all your dudes 
uh, I think Black Panther 2, possibly. Possibly. Oh, no, Doctor Strange, sorry. <laughs> uh, Doctor Strange, Hawkeye, Iron Fist, like all these like, heavy hitters just attacking the X-Men. And then it goes into um, some really interesting Luke Cage stuff. Yeah, Luke Cage is uh, really freaking out <laughs> big time. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't even walk in the house. He's ready to get in the press. All mm-hmm. worked up looking yeah. for his wife and his kid because uh, they ran off when... Um, this shit hit the fan uh, in the, what just happened? Uh, siege. Mm-hmm. Siege? No. Uh, no. <laughs> Fear itself. It was like three years ago. Fear itself. Sorry, bro. <laughs> blackout. Well, right. Secret Wars. <laughs> I think John just had an aneurysm on air. I did. He knows he's bleeding, but. <laughs> Got scanned. Uh, yeah, after uh, after like the, the mega event, what happened, um, the, uh, the USA thing. Not Carnage, you say the fear stuff. Uh, so there's protesters outside of Avengers Mansion saying like, "You guys stink. We hate the Avengers. You guys do nothing but garbage." And Luke Cage shows up. I guess he walked back after being thrown into outer space or something. And he's like, time. "Yeah." And he's like, "He's always getting thrown somewhere." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Look, I'm not like. Do I look like I'm gonna hurt you? Like if I was gonna hurt you, I'd have hurt you already. You guys have been outside my house for like ten days, man. Just go away. I'm trying to find my wife. Like you, am I gonna hurt you? No, you know." Take and walk. just get out of here. And then, you know, he has like this, this big heart to heart with his wife who basically tells him you're going to have to, I was wrong. Uh, we can't live here. This place is dangerous. You're going to have yeah. to either be an Avenger or be a dad. And Luke Cage ends up being an Avenger. He ends up being an Avenger. Mm-hmm. Cause he has to, man. Yeah. Well, this is, this is step up time. You got to fight the X-Men. Are you going to risk being called a pussy by Captain America? Hell no. <laughs> exactly. Because I feel like that's what it comes down to. He's like, we need you, dude. Yeah, and right. And mm-hmm. after this conversation is, you know, while you're having this momentous con- mm-hmm. you know, conversation with your wife about your kid and the safety of your kid, you have like the biggest Avengers meeting mm-hmm. in the world at the dinner table. Like everyone mm-hmm. shows up and Captain America's like, guess what, guys? Mm-hmm. It's time. It's time to take on the X-Men. You cool, Wolverine? No, I'm cool. Storm's like, I'm out of here. Yeah. Storm left, and also like a Cap also made Black Panther look like uh, look like a baby man. How's that? Because like he was just like um, that's his wife, you know. And yeah. she leaves, and he's like, "Babe, what's going on?" And he's like, "Settle down, Avenger, let her go." <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. And he didn't, there was no di- no. Di- I don't think Bendis knows how to write Black Panther. <laughs> Zero comeback with that. Oh, well, well, <laughs> just says her name, and that's it. Yeah, later. Um, and then you know you have the. Uh, them watching on the monitor, uh, Cyclops blasting the crap out of Captain America, yeah, and they're like, "I it. guess it's go time right now." And it ends on like kind of like a like a somber note of uh, Luke Cage awkwardly jumping out of the helica- <laughs> helicarrier, uh, about to punch. Cy- it looks like he's gonna punch Cyclops, Cyclops, you know. But he's made his choice, and he's gonna be uh, an Avenger, and, and also be a, and be a bad father and <laughs> a terrible dad. And also in that panel, it's Cyclops looking up as they jump out of the. Uh, at his, at the helicarrier. So you think he's killing? He's murdering Blue Cage. And I, <laughs> and I, I wish there was a thought panel that said, um, "I hope the thing doesn't land on me." <laughs> they look like they're gonna do some damage. Yeah, they, they're gonna. It, it's gonna be awesome. It's it's a great book. Like all the AVX stuff um, so far has been pretty top notch. And next issue is gonna be about somehow Iron Fist is gonna get the power of the Phoenix. Yeah, he's gonna try to contain it. Let's do it. It's Dragon's Heart. Uh, Dragon versus Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Nice. Rising from the ashes. Uh, what do we got? Green Lantern number eight came out. Rockin' book. Nice return to form. Not even paying any kind of due to <laughs> new uh, the the fifty two the fifty two relaunch. This is like this is like heyday Jeff Johns Green Lantern stuff. You know, it's really really effing good. Yeah, man. This and that whole thing is that it it really feels like old school. Reason why like. Green Lantern this is the second time we've right. talked about the story arc. Mm-hmm. This story arc really is bringing home um, the mm-hmm. stuff I like about this book. Yeah. And Doug Mock is just awesome. Is it's such a dark book. It's like uh, for for you know this this whole story is about the mystery of the Indigo Lanterns, which right. is the most mysterious out of all of the the lanterns. Um, possibly the oldest. We don't know. Um, they have some strange, weird connection with um, what's his face. I've been sure. I've been sure. Mm-hmm. The original Green Lantern, mm-hmm. um, or the arguably the the best, the best, the goodest, the legendary. Yeah. Um, but what's great is like for a world that's like uh, supposed to be built around compassion, everyone's in chain. The yeah. dark. It's like the dudes are all creepy and like they're, they're forcefully making uh, <laughs> compassion slaves. Yeah, it's a really like. Mm. It's not the the road that they're, especially if they're really built around uh-huh. this whole. I, there's like it seems they're they're built around Abinsur. Yeah, 
Um, mm-hmm. And there's there's a huge statue built mm-hmm. to him. Um, plus, there's some something going on again with the Guardians as usual, where they're trying to replace the uh, the Green Lanterns because right. they're flawed because mm-hmm. they don't listen to them. Um, so they tried Manhunters, they tried the Alpha Lanterns. Mm-hmm. So this may be the next logical step of making lanterns by making slaves <laughs> right well and and like the they apparently all have control over every spectrum yep and you know hal jordan is in prison in this and he escapes by talking to a now resurrected black hand saying like oh you can do Which this is awesome you can do that and he's like what about willpower he's like i can do willpower no problem and as soon as he sees like him going glowing green he puts his fist up to his forehead and sucks out um the energy to yep, power so his just ring what I'm for. but then finds out that it's synthetic willpower and his contracts are all screwed up, you know. So he's he's trying to save Sinestro also, mm-hmm. who kind of makes an escape, but then ends up getting completely hammered by uh, drinks by the <laughs> by himself at a bar. He gets, ends up getting mm-hmm. completely hammered by uh, by Indigo, right? Yeah, you know. And she takes him out, and then you have like like the, the the cool thing about this book, and we actually talked about the last issue last month, which is like a nice little testament to this book. Because it's been a while since we. Spoke you know anything about lanterns yeah and it, it's just so cool that it's a good testament to like the space mystery you know yeah which is what like a good part of green lantern should be is the i want to know what the meaning behind all this crap in space is happening because nobody has ever told us anything yeah you it's know? it's yeah it's there's it constantly there should mm-hmm. always be in in lantern to really drive forward there it should be some type of mystery there should be some yeah. type of reveal you know that, that that's in any book, but mm-hmm. Greenland especially, there should be those greater mysteries. Yeah. So especially because, you know, you have um, the Guardians establishing a police force, you know, but they kept so much stuff hidden away, and it just leaves so much potential for storytelling. Yeah. Um, you know, and, like, I think I think the story's going to end, like, pretty interestingly. You mm-hmm. know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing, like, a lot more, uh, a lot better Green Lantern stuff. Like the other books are kind of lax. Yes. Um, like Red Lanterns is not so much. I I really wish Jeff Johns would just write every single all one. them, I, or just I don't know. Even even uh, Core has gotten better. It's it's yeah. improved. Um, New Guardians is getting there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, they're not any. Like I remember when you would have Green Lantern and Green Lantern Core, and both books just rocked. Oh yeah, yeah. And they were just like they complemented each other, and they're yeah. just so well done. And we're not there yet. They they worked extremely well in tandem before the uh, the relaunch. Yeah, you know, because you had uh, one every other week, pretty much, mm-hmm. and they were just like such. It, you had the core. The way it was structured was, <clears throat> you know, like you have your solo story that's tied into the bigger story, and then you had the B, not not even the B lister lanterns, you know. Yeah. But you had like guys who you couldn't get enough of, like Kilowog, guy Gardner, mm-hmm. um, you know, the guy with the arms. What's his name? Salak. Salak. I always like that dude. Yeah. Um, really cool stuff, man. I'm I'm back in it. I'm back in it. I'm back in it. Uh, and speaking, and I want to know what's yeah. going on with the Nicole Lanterns. I want to know. Yeah, it's it's a good mystery. Um, it's only up to issue eight. Everybody, check it out. Uh, new relaunch Green Lantern. Google series. it. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Google, that's going to be the other call tag for the show. Google it. Uh, and speaking of space stories, Saga number two also came out this week. Wonderful. What a book, man. What a book. What a book. Go for it. Let's go. Uh. You really gonna put me under pressure like this? Mm-hmm. Um, this is the fo- this is <laughs> this is the uh, the second issue to the wonderful, wonderful, strange uh, sci-fi fantasy story of mm-hmm. Saga. Um, the first issue kind of introduced us to this strange world. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's two warring factions, um, all tied up in another. I guess the government or, or the big bad guys of the other wreath, um, mm-hmm. who are also controlled by the Baron robots. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> um, and they're trying to recover these, uh, the baby and this couple. Uh, you're starting to learn a little bit more about the two characters, who are the parents. Um, mm. You've got, uh, it looks like he, the father, who is a magician, goat, goat horned, right. um, also has uh, a vow of never pulling a sword out again. Right, yeah. Because um, apparently he was a bad dude at one mm. point. That they, they were looking at his rap sheet, and he's terrible. Now he's like a complete pacifist. Yeah, yeah. and uh, then you have this Han Solo type character called mm. the Will, who is a bounty hunter, who's being sent to track down this mm. the couple. But he also learns that they've sent out another bounty hunter from the bounty hunting agency. In, yeah, in space <laughs> as a backup. Yeah, and what was her name? The Stalk. The Stalk. Yeah, who's a really visually awesome looking character. Mm. 
Um, I should have taken the picture before. She's a, she's. You get the reveal that she's like a Spider Woman. Yeah, yeah. she like has no. It looks like at first like she has. Mm-hmm. She's like a Venus de Milo. She has like yeah. no limbs. Um, but she's got all the limbs. Yeah, <laughs> she's got plenty of them. all of them. Um, yeah, so she has like it's like she's her uh, her lower half is cloaked in black and she has no arms and like she's topless and she has like eight eyes. And uh, there's one scene where uh, you know after the Will, who's the bounty hunter originally hired and he's like i really i gotta get out of here let me max out this credit card on hookers uh, hookers that yeah. they gave me and uh you know the stalk will take care of it you yeah. know because she's supposed to be like the like the bad bitch and um she shows up and just like unfurls that black cloak and she has like eight spider arms holding eight guns and yeah. knives and and while this is all going on they're they've been trying to they're trying to get to the, the parents are trying to get to this uh mm. rocket ship uh graveyard or whatever right rocks yeah. of forest or something uh, and try and get off planet, but the whole time they're there, they're worried about these things called the horrors, which yeah. are these unseen nightmare creatures, yeah. legendary like nightmare creatures. Yeah, they're lurking yeah. in the darkness, so you don't know what that what it is. And mm-hmm. at the very end, they stalk is like, "I'm out of here. The horrors are coming." Yeah, um, good luck. Good luck. And you see them, and they're basically like little like mutilated goth ghosts kids. Like they look like Earth kids. Yeah. Yeah. They like yeah, like look like weird um, like emo kids. Yeah. They look they look, they be Johnny the Homicidal Maniac and they yeah, got more of cut in half though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's an awesome book and you have like so much crazy like the universe that that um Brian K. Vaughan is building along with Fiona Staples is is fantastic. And you have yeah. the narrative of you know, it's it's the child's narrative. Um talking about uh them her parents making it through the forest, encountering this and that, and, and everything's then, in the past tense, which just makes yeah. it really great. Like it's like she, I think in one, in one moment she's like, "Oh, this is the moment when my parents screwed up everything." Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like really to- done very, very well. Um, and and also, uh, I I know a lot of comic book fans have um like a, like there's like a stigma about science fiction comic books, you know, um huge in like the like the early eighties and like you have books like Heavy Metal and like Alien Legion and stuff like that, uh, Rom Space Knight, I'll throw that in there, sure. um, but. The, like even if you're not a fan of crazy sci-fi, like this is a good transcendental, transcendental book or transcendent book transcendent. that um you know even if you just like good literature, you will enjoy Dude, this rocks. book. You know, it's so entertaining. Mm-hmm. It's really it really it really goes beyond like uh, it's tough to even say it's like a sci-fi book or a yeah. fantasy book. It's it's there's a lot going on in this book. Um, just like the same th- way you can look at, you know, Ex Machina was not yeah. just a politic book. Right. Um, it was, t- it went into directions mm-hmm. you've never thought, you know, it could have gone in. Um, and I'm sure we're going to get a lot more of this because this is like such a brand new universe mm-hmm. to play in. Is Brian K. Vaughan a creator's creator? I think so. Yeah. I would say so. I think so. I, I think everything he's come out with has, um, been above and beyond. Yeah, dude. He yeah. he really is something special. You know, like uh, you know, we talked about Garth Ennis and you know, great length last week. Um, Brian K. Vaughan really is one of those people who is you know you can tell it's just mm-hmm. bursting with like incredible, incredible long term storytelling mm-hmm. ideas, and this is just a testament to it. It's just mm-hmm. tremendously well done. Plus, like uh, like his uh, we should do like a like a like a Brian K. Vaughan bit mm-hmm. uh, at some point in the future. But through his other works, you know, you always get the feeling that this guy is super creative and like knows exactly where the story's gonna end up. Yeah, you know, through Ex Machina and um, Why the Last Man. Why the Last Man is one of my favorite comics of all time. Yeah, and it's kind of a tough sell to people, you know, because of like, uh, like the been there done that kind of aspect of it of like he's the last man on earth and he's trying to figure out why. Yeah, you know, but it ends up being this completely. Fantastic story! Oh, it's such a good book. Yeah, it was. A, it, it. I remember it, it being somewhat of a hard sell. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, yeah, it's the one dude. You know, the one, the last man alive. Mm-hmm. Bunch of women running around. You know, unfortunately, it's not the easiest sell. Right. But uh, I think, I think I've handed that the first trade to many people. Just like it's so well done. Yeah, they're blown away by it. You know, and uh, it's not what you expect. No, not at all. And again, like the art was uh, was beautiful on that too. He always teams up. I think like a good a good thing with him is like he always teams up with these awesome artists you know like Pia Guerra um, Tony Harris mm. Fiona Staples um, I'm trying to remember who he was with in his Marvel the stuff he did for Marvel Marcus Martin Marcus Martin um, really good stuff guys check it out um, I think the first issue of Saga is 
in its second or third printing at this point. Something like that. Because it was like, I think the week after, it was like the first print was selling for like $15. Yeah. On like eBay. Hey, um, man, if you, can, uh, mm-hmm. if you can't track down a copy or you're too lazy, get it digitally. And also, and I cannot stress this enough either, no ads. You're getting a thick comic book yeah. with zero ads, and it only has a $3 uh, price tag, which is which is awesome. Which is wonderful. Last issue yeah. we got, how many is, uh, pages in there? Like 42 pages. Yeah, man. That was gigantic. And you also have, like, this is like one of those books, like, for me, where um, you almost feel like you should be paying more because it's so good. Yes. You it know? is is way, 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 like, top notch quality mm-hmm. book. All right, what do we got? Last book, last book of the week. Why not? Batman and Robin number eight. Rockin'. Tremendous. Yeah. This is the big fallout of uh, the battle with Nobody, who is the son mm-hmm. of Ducard, one of the people who have trained Bruce to be the wonderful right. Batman that we've known and love. Um, that's, a, that's a new relaunch book, by the way. The, the wonderful Batman. The wonderful <laughs> Batman. Um but the great thing is that nobody has broken uh, Robin a bit by mm-hmm. uh, forcing him to uh, put his fingers through his head and kill him. Yeah. So the last issue, issue number seven, ended with uh, Damien murdering uh, nobody. Yeah. You know, because he didn't, because he know he knows even as a ten year old kid, he knows like, listen, Dad, like all your guys end up coming back, like all your villains, your rogues gallery, they end up coming back and they come back worse than ever. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You can take the day off on this one and just kills him, you yeah. know. And what's cool is that it's it. I I didn't think this issue was gonna go the way it did, mm-hmm. you know, because I immediately pictured just like the lecture. Yeah, you know, it was it's cool how they handle it. Like mm-hmm. so, what happens is he, uh, Bruce, you know, kind of scoops up uh, Robin, mm-hmm. um, make it back to Wayne Manor, and you know. Yelling at Alfred a lot, fix him, and you know, mm-hmm. it's like, well, you need to get fixed up also. You know, there's a whole thing, and he eventually collapses. Um, they both got concussions, they're both messed up, and it's a really cool moment where he's like tucking in Robin mm-hmm. and Damien, and uh, he gives him like a recorder. Yeah. And when Batman was rushing to save Robin, he mm-hmm. made a recording, and basically, what it is is explain to Robin, like, listen, I always have the urge to kill. Yeah, you know, like you, like well, look at all the people that we've dealt with. Mm-hmm. Like we've, I've had to hold back. I always have the urge to kill, but I made that promise and I can't break it. Right. And he's like, you know, uh, he's like, you think I'm ever gonna get past this? He's like, no, you'll always remember this moment. Yeah, you'll, oh, I'll never, I'll make sure that you never forget the mm-hmm. fact that you killed this guy. It's a, it's an awesome dynamic because you have Batman being born of uh, his parents' murder. And you will have the future of Damian Wayne being haunted by the fact that he is a ten year old murderer. Yeah, and uh, and you and you know through Grant Morrison's storytelling, you know you were able to see mm-hmm. him as Batman later on. Yeah, and he is you know a murdering Batman. He's a bad dude. Yep. And uh, and he and like that that Gotham was like the grossest Gotham. Too. It was. It was yeah. a cool. It was a cool little bit too. Is uh, the fact that he was also validating Bruce was validating to Damian that he. Um, that the murder aspect doesn't always just come from the Al Ghul side of the family. That right. It is also, like, in him that yeah. it's not just kids just blame mom. Well, there, there's a nice little, like, he does, like, a nice little speech mm-hmm. saying, like, you know, you're as much my son as you are your, your mom's son, too. Yeah. You know? Um, and there's, like, like some really cool stuff where, you know, Damien's just like, well, I thought we hated each other. And he's like, I can never hate you. <laughs> like, you're my guy. You yeah, Damien, Damien really, like, breaks down on this one, and he's really just like, he knows mm-hmm. he really messed up. And, uh... Mm-hmm. He loves his dad. Beautiful bit, too, where, you know, they're getting stitched up and Alfred's like, you know, they're kind of breaking Alfred's balls a little bit. Saying yeah. Like, all right, Dr. Alfred, relax. And yeah. he's like, uh, he's like, stop, you're going to break your stitches. And he's like, Damien, why don't we go out and do something mundane? And they end up playing catch with, uh, the, dog. with the dog, Titus. Titus. Uh, not Ace the Bat Hound. Not Ace the Bat Hound. Awesome. So then you see like, like an awesome, you know, in typical Batman fashion, the Bat Signal goes up and Alfred's like, couldn't we just have one nice night together? <laughs> yeah, you know, and they nope. both go running off to uh, to fight some crime. So good, yeah. Really, like this. Yeah. This is this is aside from the Scott Snyder Batman stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, this is top notch Batman. Yeah, it throws such an awesome element into uh, into the character and into the book too. Because, uh, like, I do. I think Batman needs a ton of titles. Not really. Uh, he's even like doing the digital Batman also starting in a few months, where it's going to be digital only. Really, uh, Batman written by a bunch of different writers, and I think Temple Smith is handling hmm. a lot of the art. It looks kind of cool, but that it's Batman Digital, so it's going to be the first digital release comic, mm-hmm. not on the newsstands. Um, this is a top-notch book. You have the awesome dynamic between him and Damien. Um, 
Detective is not that great. Uh, no, it's not. Dark Knight is not that great. No, it's not. And regular standalone Batman is the best. The best. You know, great, great, great book. Um, <clears throat> and that's kind of what I, I want. Different aspects of the different of the of the Batman universe. You know, because you would have Detective as the the actual crime solving book. You'd have Batman as the high action book. And I would like, you know, Batman and Robin as the, the weird, <laughs> I'm trying to be a dad kind of book. Yeah. You know, well, we're also, we're also getting the uh, Batman incorporated in a, in a month or two, which is high octane, wacky adventure, Batman, yep. you know, with like, it's like a little uh, touch on the silver age there. Um, turn the fat a little bit on the Batman books. Do yeah, one, I think so. Do one Superman book too. And that's it. Yeah, just a good. Yeah, I think book. that's all that they can. The industry can really support right mm-hmm. now is just one Superman book. Yeah. So, um, I think that about does it. Man, you got anything else? <sighs> I don't think so, brother. No. I don't think so. All right, everybody. This has been another fine episode of Behind the Counter. I'm your host, Rich Stambolin, and I am the Breaker of Chains.